What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how you doing? Doing well. How about you, buddy? In a better mood? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Because we because might win be... 64 games right now. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> all right. All right. Is that the way this podcast is going? Do we just need to like sure. stop now? Really? Sure. Is, it, is that really going to be the way it's, this is going to go? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we got breaking news, I guess, kind of breaking news tonight. Uh, as we were not as we're recording this earlier today, uh, the Angels did make a free agent splash. Before we talk about it, though, I know everybody probably knows about it. Before we talk about it, don't forget to uh, like, like, subscribe, um, leave a comment down in the description below. Follow us on all our social medias, X, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow myself on X, Jared underscore Tim's Nate at Nate Green 34. And back on to that little bit of breaking news that I was referring to and if you know maybe you live under a rock or something like that or maybe you're only on youtube or only listen to our podcast angels do sign travis darno former atlanta brave socal native by the way lakewood high school um so kind of cool to see that but uh they do sign travis darno for two years and 12 million dollars will be about six million dollars a year nate's do i ask you for your reaction do i do i (laughs) <laughs> should i ask you okay okay go I, ahead give prob- us your reaction. Pro- probably uh, give us your reaction. the los angeles braves the los angeles braves at anaheim angels i don't know something like that <laughs> um I, i'm excited because it, it means matt dice won't catch any more games for the angels i think that's the the big winner here matt dice was not a a good catcher um fine fine person fine fine player sure but just not a, a catcher um, this is something that the angels need. I think when you have a really young pitching staff, you need a veteran catcher to, to help grow them. Logan Ahapi was good. You saw that he, he kind of at the end of the year was out of gas and, and dealing with so many young pitchers and things like that. Like these kids need to learn from someone who, who has played before and, and has been good. Like not that Logan Ahapi isn't good. Logan Ahapi is a great player, but like, it would be nice if Logan Ohapi had learned from, you know, JT Rio Muto, which he which he did before he was traded. It, it helps having a veteran in the locker room who can help a lot of things. Which I, which is one thing I like about Darno is he can he can help the catchers, which is just going to be a Hoppy in some of the minor leaguers. He can help offensively because he he has a pretty good hitting catcher, and then uh, he can help the pitchers. I mean, there's so many young pitchers on the staff that that can learn from a guy like Darno. So it's a good move. It's it's nice to see. Um I think you and I have been talking about backup catcher for two, maybe three years now. So it's good to see that they got a legitimate backup catcher. Yeah. And since they since we have been talking about a legitimate backup catcher for two, maybe three years now, however long it has has been since Kurt Suzuki probably um was the last time they had a legit backup catcher. Um Whenever, I don't even he was remember. the starting catcher, but okay. Was he was he starting that year? I thought I mean, that's how bad they were. <laughs> Suzuki backup catcher. No, um, yeah, no. I, I didn't think they were going to pull the trigger on this. You know, I mean, we talk about don't want to harp on this. We talk about like the wasting money. I thought this was going to kind of be a little bit of a waste of money to go get a big name backup catcher because I think Travis Starno is pretty big name backup catcher. I think it's fair to yeah. say one of the probably- he'll be he big- might be the most the highest paid catcher on the market this this off season. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think like backup quarterback wise cuz you can kind of compare this to as a backup quarterback in a sense but like this is the Jameis Winston the Geno Smith type of thing you know to you know what I'm saying like Geno Smith was a good backup for a while who's who's a good backup I'm trying to think uh Marcus Mariota is that fair to say I guess Okay come on I, let me let me compare okay no um yeah I didn't think they were ever I didn't think they were going to pull the trigger I really didn't I I I I just, I didn't think it was going to happen. I want, we wanted it. I wanted it to happen. Like I had Grandal on my list, you know, of, of players. It was like, it'd been nice to get Austin Hedges, something like that. Um, didn't think they were going to pull the trigger. Um, so yes, it's good. It's good to see this. Um, you mentioned the hitting side of stuff. He had a one of three WRC plus last year. Uh, he had 15 home runs, 99 games played. We'll, we'll talk about kind of the expectation side of stuff here in a second. Um, batted 225, not known as a great contact hitter, but um, I mean, he's hit well in the past and, and got some juice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's going to, he's going to be competent. I think that's fair to say um, the angels are getting better in a spot. And I think that's what, if you want 
teams to win. I think if you want team the Angels to win, you want you they got to get better in some spots. And Angels did in fact get better in a spot where, um, I mean, you look at you look at the catching down the stretch for the Angels when it quote unquote matters most. I know it didn't matter most for the Angels this year, but when it matters the most down the stretch, they didn't have a very good catcher. Oh, Hoppy struggled down the stretch. Uh, Matt Thice kind of non-existent. So it's good to have competency at a position. You you expect them to be competent for 162 games. And if something happens, I'm not worried about Travis Darno making starts. I'm really not. Like, I think that that is perfectly fine. <laughs> Played 100 games last year. Um, I, I We can kind of get on the expectation side of stuff. Now, actually, hold on. Defensively, though, is little question mark, little blip in the road. I'd say, um, you know, was probably his worst defensive season last year. Um, but that's kind of be expected as guys get a little bit older over time. Um, expectation wise, he played 99 games last year. I don't think we can expect him to play that, right? I think that's fair to say. 99 games. Uh, honestly, I think lot. you're 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 looking at you're looking at between 70 and 80 is my is my real guess. And that's gonna be spread out. He might DH a couple days, you know, maybe Solaire plays the outfield once or twice. Um, Darno DHs once or twice, or Ohapi DHs and Darno catches. Like there's there's some places for for Darno to sneak in 70, 80 games. That that's the one nice thing about Darno too, is he's played on a team where he wasn't the number one catcher and he was still successful. Like last year, you know, Sean Murphy was a little banged up. The year before Sean Murphy was not banged up. He played in uh Honestly, I think the the 23 season is probably what you're going to look for. Like 74 games, hits about 230 with 11 bombs, has a an OPS around 700. Like that's probably what you're looking for. He was a pretty good defensive catcher that year as well. Um and he was catching some of the guys like some guys with with arguably the best stuff in baseball. Like he was catching Spencer Strider in 2023 and had really really good numbers. So, um yeah, I think that's pretty close to what you're going to get is that 70 to 80 games. Yeah, and for those who want to figure out or, or think like why, how how do we think certain things are good and certain things are bad? A lot of times I like to go by war, Fangraphs war, and a win, you know, 1.0 war on for Fangraphs is worth roughly, I think, 8 to $9 million. It's probably gone up just a little bit, I'd guess. Um, so it's probably closer to that nine million dollar mark, but I think it's eight point three three. Eight point three three. That's fine. Um, I think it's I think it's fair to say that we are expecting him to be just under a one win player. Um, twenty twenty three, he was a point eight win player. I think is what it was. Point seven mm-hmm. win player. Uh, so if you get Which that is... out of him, that's pretty solid for seventy five games. I mean, you run that over one hundred and sixty two game span. Um, I, I have no doubt that I, I could, I'm, if something happens and he plays 120 games, he might be worth his entire contract this next year. I, I, I mean, he could be a one, one and a half win player. So I like the signing. I like the signing. We talked about it. You, you brought it up. The veteran presence. We brought it up. How, hundreds. I, I don't want to say hundreds because it hasn't been hundreds, but at least 50 times in the past, the veteran leadership that needed to be there in years past that just hasn't really been there. I mean, they've had guys like Albert Pujols. They've had, you know, and the honestly, the leadership hasn't been there since Torrey Hunters left. I think that's yeah. fair to say. Like, that is the last time the Angels had a, a true leader in the clubhouse, a true leader on, on the field as well. I'm not saying that Travis Darno is that. I'm not saying that Kyle Hendricks is that. But Perry also, Perry came out today and also I mm-hmm. think Perry said yeah, I heard. that they want to bring in the leadership side of stuff. Um, this is the right time to do it, 100%. I know that Kyle Hendricks signing isn't is, isn't going to play out, out on paper, right? Like he had a very bad year last year. If he's with the team in July, August, I'd be extremely surprised. Um, he he might be, you know, he, he might be a very good pitcher next year for all. But I, to bring in those types of guys, you bring in a 36 year old Travis Starno, 36 year old um, Kyle Hendricks, guys that have been there and done that before, both in the clubhouse and on the field. It cannot be, it, it's just, it's underrated. I mean, is that fair to say? I, I know we've talked about it before. I mean, they brought in Kurt Suki in the years past too to, to kind of do this too, but it's such an underrated part of the game, Nate. We've, we've mentioned it so much. I, it, it's a stat that can't, is not kept right. We think this adds 
wins bringing in these types of guys? Like, th- does this help at all? <clears throat> so, bringing in Travis Darnell will bring in wins because he he is a good enough player where leadership plus the ability is going to be helpful. Um, but you can't just bring in guys because they're good leaders and really bad players. Because one, I think it's really hard to to listen to a guy that is not very good. Uh, that's why you typically see like the the leaders are usually guys that are are good players. They they don't have to be the best player on the team, but they do have to be someone that is like good enough to start. Um, And and that's what, that's what the Kyle Hendricks thing is even more concerning to me. And I know you're going to be upset about this, but like if Kyle Hendricks is going out there and has a 70 RA and is trying to tell guys like how to behave, it it makes things a lot harder than if he, if you signed Shane Bieber and Shane Bieber is like, Hey, this is how we do it. This is how we go about things. And Shane Bieber is like, Hey, I got a three, five. It's like, Hey, you're not the Shane Bieber of old, but you're still going out there and you're you're putting together like competent outings and giving us a chance, right? Like that that's what the difference is for me. Like Travis Star, no, he's good enough player. It's not going to be a big deal whether he's a a for sure starter or a bench piece. Like I think he can lead because he's been good, a very good player in the past. Um and he's been on World Series teams, which you can mention with Kyle Hendricks as well. He was on the Cubs team. But, um, yeah, I, I think that's a big thing is is leadership. But you need to bring in guys that are going to be um, assets to the team and not just like, hey, the only reason we're bringing you in is to be a leader. And, yeah, you are you may suck at baseball, but, like, if you can lead, like, this is going to be great. I, I think it's really, really hard to listen to those type of guys. I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad at you for saying that. By the way, I, I, I not a huge Kyle Hendricks signing fan. It, it is what it is. Um, I think you're forgetting about the respect aspect of it. You know, um, I, I, I truly do think that you're like in high school, you don't get the respect factor. You, you don't like. You can be like uh, you, you're a good player, and people look up to you in college. Even I think that in certain colleges, maybe not the D1 level, but let's say like anything but the D1 level and even probably at some D1 colleges. I think that if you're one of the better players, you get looked up upon, but you also have to have that leadership quality. You also have to have that, that respect factor. Like Paul Skeens at LSU probably was the leader in the clubhouse. I would assume Dylan Cruz probably was the leader in the clubhouse. And those guys were, were absolutely freaking ridiculously good. I remember it. I don't know who it was, but there was a story, and I think you probably might have said you. This might ring a bell. Somebody was in the club. Some there was a player in the clubhouse that just went ham on, and it could have been Paul Skeens. I, I don't know if that was that was him or not, but just went absolutely nuts on a player, um, because he wasn't like he was. He was walking around. It might have been Skeens that was walking around saying that I outwork all of you guys. Does that ring a bell? Like just I can't. No, think of who, um, I can't think of who it was. The, the guy that the guy that. I would believe would go off would be Tommy White actually on that team. Um, Dylan Cruz kind of seems a little bit quieter. Skeens would go off on people. I could see that on the um, on the pitching side of things, but I think it would have to be a pitcher for him to go off. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe if it was a pitcher, yeah, it. it, I, it could I just remember. I just, and I just and remember yeah, the 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 respect thing is huge. Don't get me wrong, but like. Not too many people are growing up saying like, I want to be an 84 to 88 mile an hour righty that gets guys out. Right. No. Like. But I think he, the fact that, couple- that he's been there and done it is, is so much bigger than, than anything. Right. Like, yes, but, he, but might then get, what, he might not get respect. Then what, he might not get respect from. I'm not going to say that actually. He might not get respect no, from no, all the guys. Don't say that. But, but, but what I was going to say is like the Tyler Anderson effect, like how, he he probably has respect, but are people listening to what he says? Or like my favorite example right now, who did who did the org try and push on us as like the leader of the pitching staff last year? They, they didn't they didn't try to push Griffin Canning. They expected Griffin Canning. Him, they expected him to Griffin play. Griffin Canning was part. the guy, right? But no. he was so bad that like nobody's gonna listen to that guy. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. 
they didn't push him as a leader. They pushed him as somebody that if the Angels wanted to win needed to be be good. But they did. Really? They also they, they didn't. They didn't Watch say that Griffin Canning is leadership characteristics. Griffin Canning is like the leader of the staff. He he is the one telling guys what to do. Like all those things. Like it, it wasn't Tyler Anderson. And I think, Tyler the, Anderson I think has, the fact that we're having this conversation means that there isn't a there wasn't a leader. Like there's there nobody that is taken there, that is there taken hasn't up. there hasn't been a leader on the pitching staff since Jared Weaver. We've mentioned this every single time we talk about leadership, and there hasn't been a leadership in the clubhouse from an offensive standpoint since Torrey Hunter. And again, we mention this every single time we talk about leadership because those are the only two guys in the last 15 years that the Angels have had, uh, last 10 years that the Angels have had that have actually been leaders on the field. Yeah. Mike Trout's a great player, not a not a a guy who's going to go out and tell somebody like they're doing something wrong. Albert Pools kind of s- sticks to himself from what we've been told. Anthony Rendon, we already know he sticks to himself. So they, they're they a very quiet bunch, and they need somebody to come in and, and light a fire. And, you know, I think Darno could be a, a nice piece to help. Yeah. And Not I mean, the if, piece, but a, a piece. Yeah. And if, and if you're watching us on YouTube, let us know. Leave us a comment down in the description, but, or leave a comment down below. Um, let us know your thoughts on this. Let us, I mean, we talked, if you guys watched the Ben Joyce interview, which I forgot to mention, if Ben Joyce, uh, Trey, Gregory, Alfred, Michael Daryl Hicks, just, you know, <laughs> scroll down, find those interviews, go watch them. But when we were talking to, talking to Ben Joyce, who was the guy that he mentioned? Hunter Strickland. Hunter Strickland, which I mean, it is, I don't know, like been there, done that before he was good. He was decent for the angels though. So it's somebody that, you know, was having good, he good success. Good. Yeah. Good, good success. But I think that you can still, I think you go into spring training and it may not last forever, but I think you go into spring training and you look at Kyle Hendricks as someone that you can mentor and talk to. I, I don't know if we necessarily consider, I don't know if I'd necessarily consider him a leader in the clubhouse, but more of a, more of somebody that you can go and get answers from, you know, you're struggling. It's like, Hey Kyle, what do I do? Because the wisdom is there with Kyle Hendricks. Now, I look at Travis Darno as somebody that is probably going to be a leader in 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 the clubhouse, and Kyle Hendricks might be that way, you know, as 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 well. And Hunter Strickland might have been that way too, as somebody who you know King grew court pleased everything. But um, but yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. We'll we'll wait and see. On the leadership note, do we do you, do you think that Angels continue this trend and get another one of these guys? I mean, Shane Bieber's an obvious choice. I think that that's a good good ace. But yeah. I would like to see them go get Shane Bieber, Jack Flaherty, guys that have been, you know, a legitimate ace for their staff at some point in their career. I don't know if that's going to happen. I know people will say Corp Burns. I know people will say uh, like Snell. You know, the the list is is very long on starting pitchers right now. I don't think they're going to be in the high end money from what it sounds like. I think um, Shane Bieber is probably the highest end, or Jack Flaherty is the highest end money guy that you'll see from them. Um, and I, do I think that they're going to stick this way? Um, I think it, it depends on position. So if they're going to go get a, a shortstop, like which they, they might need to after the Neto news, that would make sense to go get a veteran leadership guy that understands like, Hey, I'm not going to play every day. Like, yeah, I'll play every day for the first couple of weeks until Neto comes back, but I don't need to play every day. But like, if they're going to go get a third baseman, I don't see them going to go get a a veteran leadership, a third base, right? Like, you're probably going to go get a young kid or someone who's younger um, and, and got a shot to push Anthony Rendon. So it, it just depends on, on the position. I think starting pitching, you're looking for someone who's going to be a good pitcher and have some leadership skills. So... Yes and no. I know that's you know, a bad answer. You, you know who I think has that kind of fu Jared Weaver mentality, and you're not going to like the name Walker Bueller. I think I think he's kind of got that like shove it type of attitude that 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 Jared Weaver had. I don't know if that's that's the answer or not. You know, but I, I for me that's not the answer. I, I know you like him, but two TJs. Uh, Honestly, like thought he was getting cut. Like that's how bad he pitched this year. Like, um, not not gonna throw any shade either here, but like the, the RPMs and everything went up in the, like for his last two or 
two postseason starts or last three postseason starts. So that's a little scary too, that like just randomly that um, some stats just start jumping up in your last three postseason. His first two postseason starts, he was awful, at least his first one. And his numbers were the exact same as they were in the regular season. And then all of a sudden they, they jumped up for the last um, couple starts. And I don't know if that was adrenaline. I don't know what that was, but like, it, it is a, a little concerning when you just randomly figure things out with, you know, your last two postseason starts and one of them happens to be in the world series. So I'm out on Walker Buehler. I think Shane Bieber or Jack Flaherty. Honestly, I think Jack Flaherty has that, that same mindset. I don't know if Shane Bieber has that same mindset. I think he just kind of is going to go about his business. But like you said, the respect factor, um, the knowledge factor, I think he he would be a, and he comes from one of the best pitching orgs in, in major league baseball. So I think he will have a lot of knowledge and be willing to share it. Like, I don't think he's going to jump somebody and say like, Hey, this is the way things need to go. But I think he's going to be a guy that is going to be like, Hey, this is how I do things because A, B, C, and D and, Maybe you should try this because of this, you know, all those things. So I think he's he's going to be a wealth of knowledge that you're going to have an opportunity to, to really feed off of. Yeah, so it definitely sounds like Walker Buehler is going to be an angel because you don't like him. Um, and I don't necessarily know if I want to see uh, the whining Jack Flaherty um, pitch an angel's uniform, you know, but that's just me. So um Last question, last but not least, before I let everybody go here. And uh, again, you can go ahead and uh, drop a comment if you're watching us on YouTube on what do we think the Angels are going to do next? And Nate, I'm not accepting the answer of DFA Jose Suarez. Go ahead. Mm. What do you got? What's what's happening next? Trade Matt Dice. Hey, for what? For who? And I, I mean, what, a, a bag of peanuts? What do you, I mean... He's got some value. He's a left-handed. He's a left-handed bat, former first-round pick. Um, so, so I guess you know there's some value. He can play. He can catch in a pinch if you need to. You could probably play. He he can probably play a corner infield spot, and he can probably play a corner outfield spot too. To be honest, so um, yeah, I, I I I mean there's some value there. I think you could get a one-year reliever type guy. Maybe you throw Matt Dice out there at somebody who maybe you know. Like a Jorge Soler type Chicago Cubs. Jorge Soler type of guy. That would be... Chicago Cubs don't have a great backup catcher. They don't have a backup catcher, actually. Um, Not that Matt Dice is a great backup catcher, but like teams are are desperate for guys that play in the major league. So whether it's Matt Dice or fill in the blank, like if he gets non-tendered, he probably gets picked up by a team and given a, a real chance to make this squad. Like, um, so I, I think he, there is some value. I think he, he's a guy that you got to move off of. And I think that's the next move is to move Matt Dice. But if we're talking non catching duties, um, I think the next thing they do is go get a starting pitcher. Um, like I mentioned, Shane Bieber, you mentioned Walker Peeler. We both have mentioned Jack Flaherty. Um, some people are trying to throw Kikuchi's name out there. Um, there. There's a bunch of different pieces in that in that range of starting pitchers that the Angels are going to look at. But I, I would not be shocked if the next move is a starting pitcher besides a Matt Dice trade. I'll go with uh, former <laughs> Brave, just because we're on the Braves theme. Luke Jackson is an Angel. Um, I don't know why I don't have any. Of sources. course, you go reliever, but uh, yeah, I mean, just random reliever that you that they're going to throw a couple million dollars at um, on like a Luis Garcia type of type of deal. I think that makes a good amount of sense for me. So, um, yeah, all right. Well, uh, Angels do pick up a backup catcher, a good one at that. Uh, we'll we'll kind of see how it goes. A, a leader in the clubhouse, we'd assume. A leader on the field, we would assume as well. Let us know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. Uh, we will be back tomorrow talking a little bit of, I don't know yet. Actually, I do know what we're talking about, but I'm not going to give it away to you guys. So tune in tomorrow for another episode of Talking Halos. Um, go ahead, follow us on our social medias, X, Instagram, and Facebook. You can follow myself on X, Jared underscore Tim's Neat at NateGreen34. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.